Hello, you guys. I'm coming to you today on a Sunday afternoon. We are making authentic Philly cheese steaks, you guys. We have our onions. You must have onions. These are um, two white onions, cut in half and chopped, sliced. There's a difference between sliced and chopped. And we have, um, how much meat is this? Let me see. package of this uh, cheese steak meat sliced and shaved this is the brand that I used 100% beef no fillers and it's shaved got that from Kroger's okay you guys before so we get started let's talk about Philly cheese steaks I am from Philadelphia so I can say this green peppers do not go into Philly cheese steaks no, they do not. Another thing, steak sauce. Do not go on a Philly cheese steak. Nor do provolone. Uh, what, are, what other cheese I've seen? Cheddar. Mozzarella. No. Only cheese that go on a Philly cheese steak is white American. There it goes. I said it. And it's the truth. Okay, you guys, let's get into this video. Now that we got that um, done, preheating my griddle. Okay, you guys, and I'm going to spray. Oh, and we have some salt and pepper here and a little oil. So we're going to spray our griddle down with some oil. Okay, now... Let me tell you guys what I did with the meat because in Philly, they have big griddles. They can use metal spatulas and chop, 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 chop. When you're home, you do not want to mess up your pans, chop, 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 chopping on them, especially if you have a nonstick coating. So what I did was I took the knife, I chopped it up as fine as I can get it, put it apart, with some, had some gloves in my hand, pulled it apart, chopped it up because... I'm not gonna get to I'm not I'm I mean I'm not getting that far with these little spatulas. So I try to do as much as I could before it get on this little griddle. Now you know these aren't gonna do that much. I can't see. So there you go. So try um try to chop your meat up as much as possible. Now we are gonna put we're gonna cook our Our onions down. Okay. I thought this thing was hotter than what it was. Oh. I had it on warm, you guys. Okay, you guys. I had to put you down so I could get into this thing. There's a lot of chopping involved. So you, you want your heat high. I have it on 400 on this grill. This thing moves fast and cooks quick. Okay, you guys, once these start to cook down, I'm gonna add a little salt and pepper to these. But you wanna keep them moving. Uh-oh, that's not what you want. You don't want to dirty the kitchen. I already did that today. All right, guys. We want to keep these moving. We want to cook these down. And then we will add the meat. Now, let's talk about rolls while we're waiting for these onions to cook down. Now, if you were in Philadelphia, you will be using Amarosa rolls. Okay? Not Italian bread, not French bread, not Cuban crusty bread, not none of that stuff. We are using hoagie rolls. Okay, you guys? I'm sorry I'm getting aggressive, but I'm from Philadelphia, so I take a cheese steak very seriously. Okay? Let me show you. I'm in Georgia now. 
so I can't get Amarosa Rose. But if anybody's watching this video and they're from Philadelphia, please comment in the um, I said description in the comments how important Amarosa Rose are to a Philly cheesesteak, just like how green peppers are not important to a cheesesteak. So let me show you guys what I did get. These rolls from BJ. These are a pretty good substitute. They're, um, uh-oh. You gotta keep these things moving, you guys. These are um, baked fresh daily, like Amarosa rolls. They're hoagie rolls. And they're pretty good. It's not Amarosa, but. So I would say go to your uh, bakery section of your grocery store and um, get a fresh baked, baked hoagie roll. I know Publix has it, Kroger's has it, and uh, Walmart has it because I get them from there sometimes. They have a good one also. Okay, so go ahead with that crusty bread that I see on YouTube. Oh, you need a good crusty bread. No. No, you don't. You need a hoagie roll. Okay. You guys, these things are smelling good. I use a lot of onions because we love onions. So if you don't need this many onions, then chop up the onion. But we love onions, you guys. Okay, I'll come back when I'm adding the, the meat. Okay guys, we're back. You see the onions cooked down about halfway. Now we are going to add our meat. Now this is where all the toppings can be okay? We're gonna add a little salt, okay? And this is all the cheese they need. Salt, black pepper. That's it. Garlic, no. I said I got two fast for trying to get in there. Incorporate the onions in this pot. Just pop, 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 pop. <laughs> Nothing to it but to do it. See how it's starting to incorporate. And I have a lot of onions. Maybe try. There you go, come together. I like to use this griddle because it catches all the grease. So it doesn't leave it nice. I mean nice, it's not nice. It doesn't leave it greasy at all. Because if you use a pan, you know, it's just sitting in the grease while, while you're chopping and cooking and stuff like this. So all the grease is draining while I'm doing all this chopping and all stuff. So that's a good thing about this griddle. Now you might lose a couple onions down here, but I have enough. See you guys, you see how it's coming together? Just keep on chopping. Just chop your life away. Depends on how bad you want this sandwich to be good. Mm. And it smells like a Philly cheese steak in here. Okay. I lost a couple onions along the way, but look at that. I would say that and then lose some more. Okay, guys. My hands hurt. Okay. Now, what did I say about cheese? What was the rule of thumb about cheese? White American only. What's the rule of thumb about bread? Hold your rolls on. Okay. So we have our white American cheese here.
Okay, guys, we section our um. Is that one piece of cheese? We section our um cheese sticks off, and then you want to place the white American cheese on your cheese sticks, and let that melt into your meat. <laughs> I turned the griddle to warm because we don't want to cook it any longer. We just want to melt the cheese. Okay. And then we will place the um oops. Okay. Let's move this out the way. You place the buns over top of the meat and the cheese so they have a chance to steam. Okay, you want them to steam and get all soft and start to suck up some of this cheese stick magic. There you go. This griddle is small, but make it work. Make it work, just put them. So they can steam. Okay guys, this is it. Once these finish steaming, we are ready to eat. We are ready to taste the cheese sticks. And now the bread is nice and soft. You can turn this off and just simply scoop that meat in two. Look at that. Look at that right there. Mm -mm. What did I tell you guys? Look at that. Nice and cheesy. Any residue at the bottom? Oh, all my cheese want to come off. That's all right. Scoop it up. Put it on your cheese steak. Look at that. Ooey goo. And delicious. You will not be disappointed, guys. At all. Okay, guys. The cheese steaks are all completed. And my boys are ready. My boys are ready to eat. So, I don't know if I said this earlier, but you put mayonnaise, salt, pepper. We added the salt and pepper and ketchup. And that's it. Cut this in half. Well, wrap it. Cut it in half. And serve it to the bowl. And that's a Philly cheesesteak. And it also keeps it warm because somebody want to play Fortnite and not come eat lunch. Bam. So you guys, this is my Philly cheesesteak video. Like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thank you. Bye-bye.